Hey, hey, Thomas Bartke here, creator of Red Retarget and Trackify, and I want to give you a quick instruction video here on how to activate uh, the Facebook Pixel for Teespring and how to use them with the new features that Teespring has now implemented and is rolling out to everyone. And um, it's awesome. I think they're awesome updates. So here's a quick checklist. You can take a screenshot of this video to, to walk you through here. Uh, and I'm going to show you also where these things are. So let's start in your Teespring account. First, you go to uh, settings, and then so your settings, your account settings is right down here where the gear icon is. And then there you go to the conversion tracking tab, and here you select your your different settings for the for the new Facebook Pixel. So there are two checkboxes here. The first one is upgrade to the new Facebook Pixel. So before you upgrade, it looks like this. This is probably what it looks like in, in your um, conversion tracking settings right now. It's like you have your default Facebook conversion pixel. That is the one that is used for all campaigns that don't have an individual conversion pixel set inside the campaign. And we'll get to that in a minute. So this is your default Facebook conversion pixel that is firing on the checkout page. So that is meaning here, this is a checkout conversion pixel that's tracking your sales and nothing else. And then this here is your default Facebook custom audience pixel. This is using the old name for that for that pixel. And this up here is the field for the Facebook pixel. So you go ahead and you cl click on upgrade to the new Facebook pixel. And then basically, this is the same thing, right? It's the same pixel ID, your, your default Facebook custom audience pixel, that is the same pixel ID as your Facebook pixel assuming that you're using the same Facebook uh, ad account for this. So all you need to do is just, uh, this is going to be empty here if you haven't set this before. So all you need to do is just uh, copy this number here and paste it into this field right here. And these these forms here always, uh, okay, so you, you click on update info down there once you're done. So the second part is that you can select this box here that says, continue to use the old Facebook conversion pixel. And uh, if you continue to use that, you can do several cool things. So I would strongly recommend that you just go ahead and check this box. And I'll show you in just a minute here what all cool things you can do with that uh, when you keep firing the old pixel as well as the Facebook pixel. So do this, uh, check both of these boxes, make, make sure the second one is checked as well. Copy your uh, default custom audience pixel here and paste it into the Facebook pixel and then click on update info. So what you're gonna see when you do this is you're going to see Facebook pixel actions here on your campaigns, on all of your campaigns. You go in here and there are going to be a bunch of Facebook pixel actions here. That is not a problem. You're basically you're gonna look for view content and then there are several view contents and you're gonna pick out the one that has um, your pixel ID right here. So this is the pixel ID that matches this one up here and you will see this view content event right here and you can check here the the different things uh, that are going on so there's one thing and i want to just point this out to you that is a new um, special custom feature in teespring and teespring's implementation of facebook pixel and that is this campaign url parameter so if you notice this is actually going to have exactly the same a value here that you already also find in your Teespring campaign URL. So the Teespring campaign URL is fired here as pixel data into this pixel event on your Facebook pixel. All right, so keep that in mind. And let's see here what else we wanted to go through. So we have all this. So you can still set in, oh yeah, so you can still set individual conversion pixels. So we actually be right here now. So all campaigns will use the Facebook pixel and the default conversion pixel. And the Facebook uh, pixel will fire on uh, this page that we just looked at. It will also fire then on the Add to Cart page. So once you add a, a shirt uh, to your cart and you come over here, you can also see it here. And it's going to be an Add to Cart event. Now this is a different pixel ID, so don't worry about other pixels that are firing there. Just look through all the Add to Cart events. And you'll see that this is your uh, Facebook pixel ID here. And that campaign URL parameter here is here as well. And it's showing you the shirt URL, right? And as you notice, the shirt URL is not in this URL here at all on the thank you page. So this is a good way to build 
and add to cart custom audience based on that specific campaign. And the same is going to happen on uh, the thank you page. So once you hit the thank you page, it's going to fire the Facebook pixel purchase event, and it will also include that uh, campaign URL parameter. All right. So the Facebook pixel fires in these three event positions in your in your funnel, and then the default conversion pixel. Uh, if you keep using that and keep firing that, that fires only on the thank you page and clocks away your checkout conversions there as well. So now you can still set individual conversion pixels for each campaign in the campaign setting. So we'll go over here. These here, this is a campaign setting. Um, now this is kind of funky that there is actually a Facebook pixel field here. I don't think you should uh, manipulate that and use a different Facebook pixel here. I wouldn't do that. Um, I, I wouldn't suggest uh, using different Facebook pixels in in the same uh, in the same account. I suppose you could. I mean, you you would have to basically use a different Facebook account if you wanted to use a different Facebook pixel uh, in order to do this here. So I would leave this field alone and and not really do anything with it. But then here you can continue to use different conversion pixels for different niches, and therefore you know, or even different shirts. And therefore, optimize um, you know a campaign for a specific niche. Okay, so that's what you can do here. Now, here is another thing that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention. But let's first go back and see here. So this list is, is done. Now let's look at this one. So you can now, if you're doing the setup just like I showed you just now, you can use the conversion pixels, the old version, the old conversion pixels, just like before. So you don't have to change anything about your campaigns that are currently running. If you're happy with the way that you've been optimizing them, you know, for niche conversion pixels on the checkout or for the global uh, conversion pixel on the checkout, just keep the campaigns running like this. There will, won't be any changes. They will, won't, will not use, lose their tracking and everything will be fine. What happens when you already upgrade to the Facebook pixel in Teespring, but you're still using the conversion pixels and you're still running your campaigns based on that, is that Teespring actually warms up your Facebook pixel under the hood, so to speak. So while you're not even really using the Facebook pixel or, or looking at them or using them for tracking or anything like that, it will actually already warm them up with the content that is collected there, you know, with the with all the information on the campaigns that you're running, with the information on the view content event when somebody visits the product page or the campaign page, with the information on the add to cart and the purchase. And that means once Facebook takes away the conversion pixels, it will actually then already have a bunch of information saved on the Facebook pixel and it will be warmed up and you can easily transition into that and use it. So now the last, last point here in this video is the campaign URL on the custom category video. Um, so the campaign URL is what I already showed you. The custom category is this thing that I just mentioned right here. This is a really cool thing. This is custom Facebook pixel data. And so, for example, you can put anything in here that you want. You can put something, for example, to, to, to mark a niche that this shirt might be in. Okay. So in this case, I might mark it like this. And let's say oh, this is actually automatically updating. So this is a math, a math shirt that is also for Pi Day people. So, so this is pretty cool. This would be a good parameter, right? So when you do this, there will be an additional parameter in the pixel events for the shirt, and it will be called a uh, custom category. And then it will actually fire this value right here. And what you can do with this is basically you can use the same value for different campaigns that are all that all belong to the same niche. And thereby you can then build custom audiences for specific niches across different shirts. And this will be very powerful. Now I'll show you more details about this in another video. I'm actually going to have you come over and um, opt in for that video. Not because you know I need to spam you with email, but just because I want to you know, keep you a chance to stay closer in touch and keep me a chance to stay closer in touch with you and provide value um, as we go on. So um, there'll be a link in this video here at some point, and then you can see me over on my side uh, for the other video.